means justify the end. Gandhi Satyagraha and his legacy. Who is Gandhi? What did he do to merit a focus while talking about leadership and legacy in history? Albert Einstein once said, Generations to come may well be, will scarce believe that such a man as this one, ever in flesh and blood, walked upon this earth. President Barack Obama said recently, around the world, Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, what they did was hard. It takes time. It takes more than a single term. It takes more than a single president. It takes more than a single individual. Later, Martin Luther King Jr. commented on Gandhi's strategy and its importance. I was so deeply moved by the message that I went away and bought several books on the Gandhian, uh, on Gandhi and Gandhian technique. And at that point, I became deeply influenced by Gandhi. Nonviolence is a powerful and just weapon, a weapon unique in history, which cuts without wounding and enables the man who wields it. It was used in a magnificent way by Mohandas K. Gandhi to challenge the might of the British Empire and free his people from the political domination of economic exploitation inflicted upon them for centuries. He struggled only with the weapons of truth, soul force, non-injury, and courage. What did Gandhi do to elicit such a response? When nations are building weapons of all kinds to protect themselves today, Gandhi used peace as his weapon. Nine non-violence was his mantra. Satyagraha, struggle for truth, was his strategy. In the early 20th century, he led India's freedom struggle using non-violence and satyagraha as primary weapons against the mighty British. He converted a movement led by elites and by a section of angry youths into a mass movement fighting for their swaraja, meaning self-rule. He led a nation that was hardly literate, ever united under a single leadership. He brought the diverse communities together, that spoke different languages, belonged to different races and regions, and adhered to different customs. From Kashmiris in the north to the Tamils in the south, from the Gujarats in the west to the Assamese in the east, he united them in a single nation. In fact, India is his legacy. Had it not been for him, None of the other leaders would have united the multiple nations that were administered as India. While many of his contemporary leaders, both in India and elsewhere, attempted to use violence and force, he believed in non-violence. It all started in Durban, South Africa in 1893. After being thrown out from traveling in a train and refused a place in a hotel because of his color, his initial fight was the rights of the Indians and their movement within South Africa. Instead of returning to India to pursue his lucrative legal career, he decided to give up and fight for the Indian migrants in South Africa. For the next 20 years, he was fighting for their rights. For him, sacrifice started with him, with his career and even with his family. The nation and its people became his life. And how did he fight for these rights in South Africa? His answer was unique and yet simple, Satyagraha. It was a non-violent protest against the government. The Satyagrahis, led by Gandhi, never engaged in violence. Instead, they would get arrested and toil in jail. So much so, the jail was referred as King Edward's Hotel, and he would always be the first one to get arrested. When he returned to India, Gandhi witnessed the incipient struggle for freedom against the British rule. Gandhi employed a similar approach using nonviolent means and dialogue as his weapons in his initial struggles in India for the rights of the peasants in the Champaran district in North India and the factory workers in Ahmedabad in Gujarat. For him, no struggle was inferior or superior. The oppressed, whether they are peasants in Bihar or factory workers in the Gujarat, they are the same. Gandhi did not discriminate, he fought for everyone. Perhaps that is why everyone considered Gandhi as a unanimous leader, not only in India, but elsewhere as well. Ask Albert Einstein, Martin Luther King, and President Obama. And with a man whose message of love and justice endures, the father of your nation, Mahatma Gandhi. For me and Michelle, this visit has therefore held special meaning. You see, throughout my life, 
including my work as a young man on behalf of the urban poor. I've always found inspiration in the life of Gandhiji and his simple and profound lesson to be the change we seek in the world. I'm mindful that I might not be standing before you today as President of the United States had it not been for Gandhi and the message he shared and inspired with America and the world. Their testimonies would highlight Gandhi's global legacy. Gandhi's first major intervention at the national level in India took place during 1920 to 1922. The non-cooperation movement, as it is referred to in the Indian freedom struggle, was aimed at attaining Swaraj against the British government. What made Gandhi a Mahatma was the way he fought for the rights of the people. There were no false promises, no divisive politics, no use of violence, no distinction between the upper and lower class castes, no division between the Hindus and Muslims. In fact, the non-cooperation movement brought the Hindus and Muslims together. What was the non-cooperation movement all about? It was all about fighting for the rights of the people in a responsible way. More importantly, through absolute non-violent means. It was not merely fighting against the government and breaking the system, but also providing positive alternatives. This struggle using non-violence and satyagraha as the means has left a huge legacy which could be seen in even today's in, in India's protest movements against corruption and better governance. For Gandhi, it was never about the end. It was always about the means. For him, the means justified the end. Gandhi's emphasis on, on a responsible struggle was evident when he called off the non-cooperation movement when it turned violent. A group of angry protesters in a town called Chari Chara in Uttar Pradesh burned a local police station and killed a few policemen when the latter fired at them. Following this, Gandhi made a decision which became very unpopular at the time. When other leaders were trying to convince the violence as inevitable and collateral, Gandhi would not agree to it. He called off the movement because it turned violent and Gandhi strongly felt that the people were not ready yet to fight for their rights in a responsible way through non-violent means. For Gandhi, it was not merely fighting for rights. For him, it was also fighting in a just and responsible way. Such a towering leader he was, he would not agree to the killing of policemen either. For him, there is no collateral. The launch of the non-cooperation movement to fight for the rights of the people against an oppressive government, the means Gandhi to pursue those rights and his decision to call it off is what made Gandhi and his non-violent struggle one of the most unique in the history of struggle. Gandhi pursued a similar approach in some of the other protest movements he led in the 1930s and the early 1940s, which ultimately resulted in India's independence. The legacy of the Gandhian strategy can be found in contemporary India even today. In fact, contemporary India is a legacy of Gandhi. When the other countries of the region witnessed substantial military rule and undemocratic regimes, India has remained democratic. If India is the biggest democracy today, it was because of the nature of freedom struggle and Gandhi's leadership. The Anna Hazare movement for better governance was fought on the Gandhian principles. The followers of Anna Hazare wore Qadi, demanded for their rights for good governments almost similar to the Satyagrahis of Gandhi. The provision of the Panche institutions as a part of the Indian constitution is another major legacy of Gandhi in post-independent India. For Gandhi, come what may, means always justified ends. For him, it was non-violence and peaceful means. Until he was shot by an assassin in 1948, he continued to spread his message. If Martin Luther King Jr. was inspired by Gandhi's approach, Albert Einstein wondered, as mentioned earlier, generations to come it may well be, will scarce believe that such a man as this one ever in flesh and blood walked upon this earth. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the legacy of Gandhi.